This video is sponsored by the Excelsior Sporting Club, Lion Paw Security Services and Sigma Sports Management. This is James Lutton and I'm delighted to be joined today with Tyler Goodjohn. Tyler, how are you, mate? I'm good, thank you, James. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you, mate. Very well. Um, been a little while since we've seen you in a boxing ring. Uh, 2017, you left the sport with a win. Uh, first of all, why did you leave the sport, especially after a win? Um, so, I mean, I turned professional at 19, so, you know, I'd been a pro like seven, seven years at that point. Um, and I actually had my li uh, license revoked by the British Board of Control. Um, I used to make 140 pounds or 10 stone, um, when I was fighting for, you know, big titles like the WBC International and that. And I just literally told the story on a podcast about how I was making weight using saunas, salt baths, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a week later, the British Board of Control had sent me a letter through the post and they revoked my um, my license. So I rung um, Dennis Skill Martin of the Southern Area Board and uh, said, look, what's up? What's this all about? And they told me that I needed to bring a lawyer in front of the board if I wanted to get my license back. And at this point, like, you know, like I said, I've been in a lot of big fights and a lot of memorable fights that the British Board of Control were obviously earning money from sanctioning fees. I just thought, do you know what? If you can, if you can take my license off me for talking about using saunas, do you know what? Have it. So yeah, that was me. That was my boxing career in the UK done. Did you, you know, begrudge it a little bit because we've seen how weight's made in the UFC and MMA, and it's it's absolutely brutal in the way they make weight. And you know, I, I can imagine that yourself, how, how you mentioned it, probably wasn't even to that scale, or you know, even close to similar to how they make weight at the UFC. So was you how frustrated was it to be finding that out from them? Um, yeah, I mean it was super frustrating. I mean, this was quite early on in my career, so you know, perhaps I didn't know the best ways on how to, uh, you know, um, you know, sort of lose water weight and everything else. You know, there's a real science to it. I know it much better today. Um but um yeah, you know, even then, you know, obviously I was in a gym full of world champions, European champions who were making weight you know, doing this all the time. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock <laughs> having my licence taken away. But something so tiny, you know, especially when you look at, like, today with what's going on, um, which we'll obviously get on to, but, um, you know, people <laughs> people getting tested for, for steroids and everything else and then getting, like, slaps on the wrist, six-month bans, um, and I had my license taken off, you know, revoked, and the only way I could get it back was taking a law, and that that was that was too much for me in the end. Do you feel, especially as well, you mentioned about the drugs there as well, that the board make examples of certain people who may not attract a certain audience or may not attract a certain purse and a sanction and fee to those guys that will benefit them? One million percent. That's what happened. I mean, you know, unfortunately. Um, you know, for me and and for this guy, you know, the the t in between the time that I done the podcast, a guy called Scott Westgarth died um, for an English in an English title fight, and you know, I think that's exactly what happened. You know, obviously the board are going to put that down to dehydrating, making weight, and and they're going to put that down to people like me, you know, making it seem like I was glamorizing it. So um, yeah, I feel like they definitely made an example of me. They jumped on me. And that was it. I mean, since in between now and then, you've turned to bare knuckle boxing. Um, you found good success in BKB. Um, you've relocated out to America um, to pursue BKB even further. Tell me about that BKB journey. Yeah, so like I say, you know, at the age of 26, I've been a professional boxer for seven years. I'd fought at a very high level. You know, I'd you know, won the English title, fighting for the WBC International, etc. You know, and that was my job. Essentially, that was my job. So um, to have my job taken off me um, <laughs> wasn't very helpful. So for me, it was about trying to find something else that I've done all my life that I can put this, you know, energy and everything else into and, and earn a crust off it as well. So um, it was funny. It was almost like it was meant to happen. Like I was just watching BBC News, boom. Um, and they started uh, a little piece covering the BKB back in the UK, saying it was the fastest growing sport in, in Britain right now, or in the world, sorry. Um, 
And yeah, I literally contacted the promoter and just said, look, what's the, what's the deal with this? And I think like six, seven weeks later, I was fighting at the O2, my first bare knuckle fight. So, you know, it happened very quick. But to be honest, <laughs> that's the best way with bare knuckle because you have too long to talk yourself out of it. You'll talk yourself out of it. Talk to me about the differences. Apart from there's no gloves, what are the, are the main differences between gloved boxing and bare knuckle boxing? The pace of it is just totally, totally different. Um, obviously, first and foremost, you're doing two minute rounds, which to be honest, doesn't really suit me coming from a professional boxing background where I was doing a lot of 10 frees and everything else. But the pace is so quick. It's, you know, it's essentially, obviously, without the kicking, it's a, it's a street fight, really. Um, I would say the best way to explain bare knuckle in you know the how the best fighters deal with bare knuckle is the calmness in the chaos is trying to bring that boxing skill and your footwork and everything else into that situation because bare knuckle is just boom it's a car crash it's so quick um you know my first fight i sort of come out you know looking uh sort of you know land my jab to the body to the stomach have a look and and the other guy just come out bombing he threw the kitchen sink at me and, you know, I got back to the corner and my train's like, you need to wake the fuck up. Um, and it was right. And, and 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 luckily I did. And I started using my feet and started using my boxing a bit more and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, just coming to terms with the pace of it, you know. Um, and luckily, I say luckily, you know, one of my main attributes as a fighter is my, is my conditioning, my cardio, and just my damn right determination and perseverance. So... You know, that for me, like bare knuckle, they come out blasting the first two rounds. You want to hope you've got the lungs for the next three rounds because that's going to be a hard night for you. Um, so, yeah, the pace the pace is extreme. You mentioned your conditioning. Obviously, that's to yourself and you mentioned the cardio, etc. What about conditioning of your hands and injuries to your face that you um, may suffer in, in the uh, bare knuckle? How much difference is that as well? Because I'm assuming you're going to potentially hurt your hands and your knuckles a lot quicker than in glove boxing. Yeah, I mean, my, my hand from my last bare knuckle, uh, my right knuckle, I mean, it's still swollen now. You can see um, I've broken fingers, you know. Um, you know, in terms of the facial damage, I mean, <laughs> you, you watch any of my fights. I mean, like I say, where I had a pretty long professional boxing career, um, you know, I cut as a boxer, so taking that scar tissue in a bare knuckle where all it takes is literally a jab to reopen scar tissue or or just cut you. Um, yeah, it was difficult. It was difficult. It's something that, you know, I, I find very difficult in my fights because, like I say, you look at any of my fights, I'm going to cut. That's just, first and foremost, I'm bleeding, that fight. Um you know, I've started to manage it and everything else and sort of get used to it, but it's it's very difficult, um, especially when you're fighting with <laughs> with no sight. Like I say, you've got someone bombing for you and you literally can't see. You're, you're trying to get the blood out of your eyes and, and everything else. Um, in terms of how how safe people go, say, oh, well, you know, box, um, bare knuckle, how dangerous it is. I actually, I actually think that boxing is more dangerous than bare knuckle. Um, you know, the 10, 12 round fights are prolonged punishment. They're, you know, that's when you see people get hurt in boxing. Um, bare knuckle, obviously the facial damage is a lot worse, but you're not taking them punches. One, you just can't hit, hit as hard without a glove on because you just you break your hands. Two, when you get hit with a bare knuckle, <laughs> that's you out. You know, um, with, with boxing, you can be on the ropes and take one and be knocked out. Take two, take three, take four, take five, and end up taking, you know, five or six shots that you really didn't need to take you were knocked out with the first one. Um, so yeah, I always say that to people. Um, boxing is is more dangerous than bare knuckle. Well, that was my next question, actually, you know, in terms of the dangers of two sports comparison to each other. I spoke to Ken Shamrock, who runs his own bare knuckle uh, promotions out in America as well. I spoke to him a few weeks ago, he said the same thing. You know, because in bare knuckle, you are going to get knocked out quicker. Um, obviously, Tris Dixon released a book about CTE and boxing and the brain damage and what it can do to you long term. We've seen fighters who have had their lives severely changed. Just to touch on what you mentioned there already, but just really emphasize on you, you yourself obviously believe it is less dangerous in bare knuckle 
And I'm assuming it is because of that reason. It is, like you said, the less punishment, you're probably, I don't know if this is proven or not, or scientifically, et cetera, but I'd imagine bare knuckle fighters are less likely to get CT than glove fighters will. Yeah, well, I, you know, bit coming from a perspective of, of doing both, you know, um, one million percent. Like, you know, like I say, I was in a lot of, I had like 10, 10 round title fights in my, in my career as a boxer and they're grueling, mate. They are grueling, you know, them 10, three minutes. Um, you know, you're taking a lot of punches at the end of the day. Um, whereas, you know, bare knuckle is five, two minute rounds, which is, you know, 10 minutes. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's long enough and you're going to get, you know, you're going to take a few, but you're not, like I say, you're not taking that prolonged punishment, just boom, 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 like you are in boxing, um, for sure. I want to touch on, you had a plenty of downs in boxing and glove boxing. Um, you mentioned obviously making weight and the fact that the board revoked your licence because of your stories about this. Um, if I remember rightly, you you was told to essentially leave an arena um, after one of your fights and you was quite quite severely injured after your fight you'd, um, and you was just told, see you later, no sort of help and no aftercare as such. Did you, have you experienced anything like that at all in bare knuckle, any sort of your grievances from boxing into bare knuckle? Or has it been a much happier experience? Um, it's hard because do you know what? I feel like, it, which is a really horrible thing to say because like like you just touched on that that fight at the Manchester Arena I fought a guy called Tyrone Nurse who went on to win the British the Commonwealth I think at the time he'd had 31-29 it was my 10th or 11th pro fight for the English title um, we had an absolute war for 10 rounds it was a it was a really really hard fight I fractured my nose, both my eyes were swollen, I had lumps all over my head. Um, it was a matchroom show, Sky Sports. Um, and the funny thing is, <laughs> in the build-up to the fight, you're put in a matchroom hotel, you're drove to the arena by the matchroom driver, you're this, that, you know, you're trek like the man. Um, you know, I lost that fight on points. The ringside doctor who checked you over, come into my changing room, looked at my face, looked at my head, looked at my nose and just said, look, you know, you've got, you've got quite bad head injuries here. You're going to have to go straight to hospital. Um, luckily, my mum and dad were in the changing room. I said, like, you know, well, how, how are we making it there? And one of the people working for Matchroom just said, look, you know, the taxi ranks outside. So I got my mum and dad like that because my eyes were swollen over so I couldn't see. They marched me out the MEN arena through the entrance. So all the all the supporters are coming in. I'm I'm hobbling out to go outside of the MEN arena and flag my own taxi down to come pick me up, take me to hospital so I can spend the night in hospital. Um, and that's the kind of shit that people don't see. I've just boxed on TV in front of thousands of people and I've just had to call my own fucking taxi to take myself to the hospital. So to answer your question, you know, have things got any better? Not really, but I just feel like I've got to the point now where I don't rely. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, you, you just can't. You just can't. You just can't rely on anyone <laughs> at the end of the day. So yeah, I've I, I really honestly can't say it's got any better. I've just I've just dealt with it better myself. I know with fighters, they find it hard, especially when it is their job, to walk away from the sport. Is that the case for yourself? Do you have any hatred towards boxing? And mm. do you think you could ever walk away from it? Yeah, I've got a lot, I've got a lot of bitterness, a lot of bitterness, um, which is, you know, it's, it's hard for me because as a kid, you know, I started boxing when I was 10 years old. Um, you know, I grew up watching Muhammad Ali, you know, the Rocky films, all that. And, you know, you look at boxing through these um you know sun tinted glasses thinking it's amazing and you know I turned pro at 18 19 again thinking wow I'm a professional boxer and it's really it's really not the game it's portrayed to be you know painted on the outside it's, it's a dirty dirty business but that being said it's all I've ever done as a 10 year old it's it's my dream it's my passion there's nothing else in my life that I'm more passionate about so you know I've just had to suffer a lot of the bullshit and 
I'm where I want to be right now. You know, it took me 22 years to get where I want to be, but I'm out here in Miami. I'm training at an amazing gym with an amazing coach who I, I love very much. Um, I've got an amazing job out here coaching boxing myself. Um, yeah, so I feel like this is my reward for all that perseverance, all that bullshit that I had to go through. This is definitely my my reward. And there's talk of a potential comeback to glove boxing for yourself, um, yourself and somebody else who seemingly now has a Florida boxing license in Connor Ben. Um, let's mention him. You put on social media. Let's get it on. You competed at welterweight when you was fighting all those years ago. Um, obviously, Connor's sort of fluctuating between welterweight to middleweight now. Um, is that a fight that you want? And do you think that realistically you could get that fight on over in Florida? Well, I'll be honest with you. Look, the backstory to it is is unbelievable. Like, and that seems like there needs to be a narrative to a fight nowadays, a big fight, because they're not, you know. So, the backstory is unbelievable. You know, I was trained by Tony Sims, his trainer. I fought under Eddie Hearn. Caught me and Connor have sparred. We've trained numerous numerous times together. I've obviously lost my license. He then gone and lost his license. I've moved to Miami. He's fighting out here in Florida. Do you know what I mean? This this stuff writes itself. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he can come out here and fight Mexicans and everything else. And actually, the guy that he fought was a tough as fuck. Do you know what I mean? He was tough. But like I say, if you want a narrative to a fight, there you go. Two English guys in America. One that was a bare-knuckle world champion and fighting bare-knuckle. The other one... I rate Connor. I really do rate him. I think it's going to be a super, super hard fight for me. Um, but fuck it. I'm going in and I'm, I'll am i be the same old El Tornado. So, um, you know, for as long as it lasts, it's going to be an exciting fight. So why not? Why not? Do you currently hold a Florida boxing license? Yeah, I, I actually have a Florida license. So, um, you know, like I've been offered boxing matches in Vegas. I've been offered one in Madison Square Garden. So, you know, fights are coming through now. And I've just said, look, I know I'm 32 years old. I'm not going to be a world champion. At the end of the day, I'm out here doing what I love and chuck me into the B, you know, the A side, B side fights. You know, I know the whole away fighter scenario. I, I done it when I was a boxer when I was 20 years old. You know, I, I'm... I'm not out here to build my record up and fight journeymen and that. I just said, chuck me into big fights and I've been offered a, a few big ones. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what comes up. It's, look, America's huge and boxing is huge. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to go back. And also, it's a bit of a two fingers up to the British Border Control who, you know, pretty much tried to ruin my life five or six years ago you didn't do shit mate you didn't do shit so yeah fuck them I want to ask a question you mentioned yourself you was trained by Tony Sims um, Connor did pop dirty whether it was intentional or not it's, you know only he will know that um, social media being social media of course took their words were said um, people are starting to say is it Tony Sims? Is the Matram Gym a little lab um, for peds, etc.? For yourself, your experience with Tony Sims, do you feel that is something that he would knowingly allow for his fighters? Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to be super honest. Me and Tony don't see eye to eye. Um, but no, nah, there was never any of that going on. There wasn't. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I never. And and I was. Cl I was close to Tony. Obviously, I then um, was trained by. Tony's brother Peter for the rest of my career so um you know I was super close with all of them and there was never any of that so that's why it was a, it was a shock to me um but also <laughs> being out here in America has sort of opened my eyes that everyone's on something everyone's on a little bit of something and when you get to that level that world level that that one percent can be the difference and everyone's on something um so it doesn't really shock me to be fair um yeah it doesn't really shock me the only thing that shocked me is that is the way that you know everyone's <laughs> tried to sweep it under the carpet and that that yeah that's just poor because it makes boxing look 
so bad. Um, and it just shows that absolutely everything about boxing is money. Definitely. Just finally, Tyler, you mentioned you've had a few offers. Um, glove boxing, is that is that your next step? Is it to come back into boxing and finish what you started? Yeah, I mean, um, so I'm a free agent when it comes to bare knuckle. Um, the bare knuckle, I've loved it. I've really loved it for as long as it's lasted. But you know, I've I've had some real promotions with the, with uh, some real problems with the promotion I've been fighting under. And like I say, I'm, I've got to that point in my life now where I want to fight to enjoy it. I just want to enjoy my tra- enjoy my training, enjoy my fighting. Um, you know, I'm 32. I've been fighting 22 years. I can only realistically see myself fighting perhaps another you know, three, four years, really, really. So why not just go out there and enjoy it for what it is? Go back to my roots, go back to the boxing. Um, Like I say, it's a big fuck you to the British Border Control. Um, And it's just another chapter to the story, you know, going from boxing to bare knuckle because I couldn't do boxing to going back to boxing. Like I say, this shit writes itself, you know, it's it's great. I'm I'm very grateful to be on this journey, man. It's, It's cool. Tyler, I wish you all the best in whatever is next. But thank you very much for your time. I appreciate speaking to you. Thank you very much, James.